And hello, everybody, and welcome here to this week's episode of the World Endurance Podcast, where tonight we're going to recap the um, six hours of spa. I'll give you my thoughts on this. Yes, I'm doing this solo. I'm D. DeWolves, a.k.a. BTS Ray Blue Hedgehog 26, by the way. Uh, I'll explain why I'm doing this solo in a minute. Uh, don't know uh, any uh, news. I can discuss, you know, who has been hot and who has not. Then we preview the big race, the 24 hours of Le Mans. So, yes, as I said, I'm doing this show solo because my normal panelist, Mr. Zachary Taylor, unfortunately, if you have not been aware on the channel uh, lately, if you've been in the president's chat, you basically already know for quite some time. But for my subscribers who are not aware of the news, um, Zachary Taylor uh, had a death in the family. Uh, one of his aunts uh, passed away. So I decided to go ahead and be solo for this week's episode of the World Endurance Podcast, which I first off want to send my condolences to Zachary Taylor and everybody in Indiana Motorsports. Taylor will be back uh, on our next episode when we recap the 24 hours of Le Mans. So that's why I'm doing this solo. So hooray for me. So let's go over uh, recapping the race at Spa, which was the six-hour race. I thought it was a very good race, uh, considering uh, this race was at Spa Frankenshaw, home of the Formula One Belgium Grand Prix, which we'll talk a lot more about that race later this year on Triple P, which we'll have a much more preview of that race later this year. And, uh, yeah, so... Uh, uh, it went to Herza Team Jota's number 12 hypercar, which was piloted by Callum Eilat, Will Stevens. They won the race. P Porsche Penske Motorsports with Kevin Estre, Andre Lauder, and Lawrence Van Hoot finished second. Lauder did not take part in Formula E, which we'll talk more about that on Triple P for a much more discussion on Formula E and all that, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Ferrari AF Corsa, uh, number 50, ended up finishing in third. Third, of course, uh, that team, I believe one of the Ferraris ended up qualifying on pole, but their time got disallowed because the car was underweight post-qualifying inspection. Uh, Antonio Foco, Miguel Molina, and Nico Jensen got third. Uh, the sister car, the 51, got fourth, uh, which is James Collado, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Alessandro Piagodi. Uh, the 99 Proton competition, Julian Angelauer and Neil Yanni got fifth. Sebastian Boemi, Brio, uh, Hako, Hakawawa, and Brendan Hartley for Toyota Gazoo Racing was sixth. Their sister car with Mike Conway, Komoi Kobayashi, and Nick DeFries ended up in seventh. The AF Corsa, Robert Kubica, Robert Schwartzman, and Yippie Yay. Uh, ended up eighth. Ninth was the Alpine Endurance Team, which was Paul Luke Chatton, Jules Gordon, and Charles Melesi. And clearly the top ten is the Peugeot Total Energies of Nico Miller and Mick Mikhail Jensen. So congratulations on that. Uh, of course, all we had 16 uh, uh or no, I'm sorry, 15 hypercars that took part. Mani EMA won LMGT3 with Richard uh, Leitz, Morris Chorung, and Yashner Sharon. Matini Purixing with uh, Joel Strom, Alex Merkin, and Kalis Blotchler got second. Iron Lynx, number 60 team, finished in third. I'll just do the team just to save you guys <laughs> Some time here. Uh, the 85 Iron Dams came home in the fourth position. United Auto Sports was fifth. That was the 59 team. Vista AF Corsa got sixth. D Station got seventh. Proton Competition eighth. Their sister car ended up ninth. And Akotas ASP team number 78 came home in tenth. Uh, let's see. Uh, I believe that was all of the, uh, all of the, uh, um, 
cars here. And only one, two, three, four hyper cars failed to finish. And then one, two, three, four GT cars also failed to finish. So eight of the 37 starters failed, uh, 37 entries that were at Spa all failed to finish. So that is a um, disappointing break. Of course, the team, of course, the hyper car standings, uh, Callum Eilat, Will Stevens moved up to second. Uh, Andre Lauder, Kevin Estray, and Lawrence Van Uth are still the leaders in the driver's championship of the hypercar. In the manufacturer standings, Porsche is now up by 23 points over Toyota. Ferrari is third with 49. Alpine with 23 and BMW with 21. In the uh, World Cup, the 12 team has 78 points. Of course, it's 67. 41 for the Proton competition. And her team, Jota, ends up is with 18. Uh, Joe Strong, Kallis Blacker, and Alex Mekelin lead the championship. Uh, Augusta Forrest uh, and that group are second. Ian James are actually tied with Ian James and company for second. Uh, Valentino Rossi is fourth in the championship standings for the G LMGT3. Marco Sorensen and his two teammates are in the top five. And then in the Matheny Pure Racing team, they lead by a healthy margin over Heart of a Racing and Team WRT are tied for second. The 46 team is now fourth in the standings with 36. And D-Station Racing with 30 on the board. So, like I said, it was a very good race. Uh, this race was really a lot of fun. I really thought... Uh, the racing was really exciting, and I'm really excited to see what we're going to see coming up this week when we get ready for the 24 Hours of Le Mans. So, hooray for that. Um, if I was the, uh, I can tell you who it was. It was the, yeah, it was the number 50 car who would have started on the pole, but like I said, their time got disallowed because of the underweight, which they had to start at the back of the grid, which is too bad. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we are now three races into the World Endurance Championship for 2024. And as I said, I'm going to go ahead and preview the big race, the Le Mans deal. So, hooray. Uh, Le Mans. Really going to be interested to see how this race is going to play out. 24 hours. It's almost going to be like the Rolex 24 from the IMSA race. And by the way, if you want to see more of my thoughts of the IMSA race, don't forget to tune into the IMSA podcast later tonight, as I will go solo for that event as well for a much more discussion on the IMSA weekend. Of course, I still got a couple of IMSA stuff to discuss from uh, Miami and Laguna Sega. You will see that later tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But endurance race, I, I've done this 24 hours of Le Mans, I think it was like two years ago. Um, I've done a full race with the LMP3. Um, you got to stay on course. You got to um, expect the uh, day to night because unlike Daytona in the IMSA, podcast we talked about earlier in the year and Zachary Taylor and I will attest to this um you're racing on streets you're racing on public roads that are shut down for the weekend the Mulsan straight um so so most of the track is basically most of the track sorry I take a drink here uh, most of the track is basically street public streets that you don't see for racing. Of course, uh, if you, ex I mean, the Molson straight is longest, but you have the three chicanes. The first one is like the PlayStation. Then it's the, uh, I can actually pull up the track map as we're talking about the circuit de la Sar. Um, Let me see. I, I have the trek here. 
Uh, you have the Daytona chicane, then the Michelin chicane, and then the Virage de Mulsanne. Of course, you're on the Mulsanne straight. And then you have the uh, Curl de Golf straight, which is, by the way, heading for Indianapolis, and the Antio, uh, the, the Bulsan, then you go to the Porsche curves, uh, DuPont, DuCarting, Corvette, Chicane, and then the uh, Boschme Chicane, then the Ford Chicane, all the way up to Dunlop Curve, the Dunlop Chicane, the like, Chapel Forest. Uh, Tet Rouge is one of the most important turns as you're going down the Mulsanne Strait. Uh, really, really important uh, to get a good exit out of uh, Terravage. Get off of Terravage, go down the Mulsanne Strait. You make a mistake coming out of Terravage, you're going to be a sitting duck down the Mulsanne Strait because you will be eaten alive. You get a poor exit out of one of the chicanes, you're just going to get eaten alive in that nature. And, you know, last year we had uh, the Gen 7 car for NASCAR who ended up completing all of their laps, even though they had a mechanical problem towards the end of that race, but they still finished the race eventually, which good for NASCAR, which I will talk more about NASCAR on Triple P, which we will have a much more discussion on the weekend's races from Darlington and also the truck race from North Wilkesboro. You'll see that tomorrow night. Um, but back to my point, you know, you've got to get a good run because, like I said, I've done the 24-hour uh, Le Mans deal. If you want to see my uh, perspective of the entire 24-hour race, I will have the link of that down in the description so you guys can go see uh, a full lap because – it takes about three and a half minutes around this uh, very long but daunting course. So um, this is, like I said, the 92nd running of the biggest event ever. Um, 24 Hours of the Mall has been going strong uh, from 1949 to now, uh, which is pretty pretty insane to tell you the truth uh it is a 38 turn 13.626 uh miles so in other words it's an eight mile road course and like i said and you know uh we've seen it in, in our competition lisa gonzalez annie thomas and myself have raced on this track before we know the dangers of having good uh racing and of course um Hopefully, we don't see a death in a deal. And the funny thing is, uh, last year was the 100th year we've been racing at Circa del Asar. It is a 101 in 2024. And like I said, this is an FIA grade two because, like I said, it is an endurance track uh, you see in the process. So 38 turns. Like I said, really important corners is... Taravage, coming out, going into Indianapolis, you've got to get a good exit off these corners. Like, Taravage, got to get a good exit. Got to get off the good exit out of the Daytona Michelin chicanes, because if not, like I said, you're just going to be, uh, you're going to be hunted down like an alligator, and it ain't going to be fun, and then you're trying to play catch-up. So, um, And, of course, we've had... Um, deaths in the race like the 2013 uh running of this event we lost uh alan simonson who lost control coming out of terravage slammed his car into a tree uh and did a lot of damage to that car and unfortunately he passed away so i think you know for this race uh we're already honoring him uh ever since he passed away uh, in 2013, I think it was either 2013 or 2012. Either way, um, you know, it was a sad day, and you know, I, I don't like to see um, drivers passing away or dying in a crash. And you know, I appreciate um, the uh, the world endurance community 
uh, continuing to race in his honor. And uh, even us at uh, Dino Voyles Racing, uh, we've honored Alan Simonson, or yeah, Alan Simonson, you know, with a golf livery uh, in the Nasser Cup Series back in 2000, and I think it was in 2016 or 2017. I, I can't remember which. 2017, that's the uh, year. But, um, you know, this is a very, very fun race because, like I said, if you win this race, it's like winning the Rolex 24 where you get, like, uh, an amazing watch and all that. So, you know, and like I said, you know, they had uh, the Gen 7 car there, uh, and it did its first test, and they did a good job. So, you know, last year was a fun race. Weather could be a factor in this race, uh, which, by the way, brings me to my keys to the race. Weather will be a factor. That's really important. And, of course, n no, no um, reason to say this. As always, you got to stay on course. Not a that's probably not going to be a big deal if you ask me. So weather's going to be a factor. Um, and unlike Daytona, and like I said, when you go into the night deal, and I've done this on uh, my PS4 Project Art Two with its annual Le Mans race, it is so dark you can't even see. And and thank God there's headlights on these cars because you're going down molson at night you don't even know what the hell you're going to see and all that thankfully you know the uh the french marshals the corner workers we call them here in america um will uh make sure uh will make sure to uh keep an eye making sure the gt cars see the prototypes make sure they get by them without much of an issue because like i said we've seen it in years past where Whenever a prototype tries to pass a GT car, there's a 50-50 chance it could end in disaster. Like Anthony Davidson, who flipped. Uh, Alan McNish's accident uh, coming out of Dunlop. It's really... And like I said, this track is the is probably the most dangerous track on the World Endurance calendar that we go to every year. And a lot of people ask me, why is it always dangerous? It's because you're running about... 327 kilometers down the Bolshan Strait, which is, by the way, the fastest part of the circuit. And a lot of times when you race at Le Mans, drivers have a tendency to uh, make a mistake and there could be some serious consequences. So I hope we don't see any of that in this year's running of the, of the 24 hours of Le Mans. Now, there is something different about Le Mans is that the FCY or the... Um, Code 60. Uh, there's going to be three pace cars uh, if we have a full course caution. Um, where if you go to pit lane, it's not like NASCAR where uh, you try to catch up to the field. No, you'll get picked up by the second pace car and then you'll just slide in behind after that. And then when the uh, safety car dives into the pits, you're back to racing, and all of a sudden, you've lost about 60, 90, maybe 180 seconds um, as far as that is concerned. So a good advice for these drivers is that you've got to make sure, A, you time your pit stops correctly, and B, you've got to make sure you don't make a mistake in the pit. Because like I said, like, uh, like IMSA, uh, if you get a contact penalty, you'll get like a stop and go plus 60, or I don't know how they do it in World Endurance. Um, you will you could get a drive-through or in what we saw at um, at Spa, which was a controversial penalty, you would get a grid penalty, which uh, I think one of the hypercars has a five grid spot penalty, which made no sense because, and, and what happened was he was getting ready to lap a GT car, and this was coming out of... Uh, uh, this is from Spa, by the way. Let's see. Uh, ro go through a Rouge Radion. This is going down uh, the Camel Strait. He was trying to clear a GT car, and they made contact. And somehow, uh, the World Endurance official said it was uh, the hypercar's fault, which, in my personal opinion, uh, there's not plenty of room for, like, three or four wide, especially when you're going... Uh, as you can go away, Winsip. 
as you're going down the uh, camel straight. And, you know, and like I said, one little mistake like that, and like we talked about in our race preview, is that uh, you got to make sure you don't go three or four wide. I mean, three wide's okay on the Molson straight, but the rest of the circuit, if you try to go three wide, that is e that's going to equal a recipe for disaster. So um, that's going to be important for these drivers. Traffic is going to be really important. And also not going three wide is going to be really important. And also the weather. We've seen it in past where, you know, all of a sudden it buckets down rain. Drivers lose control in the rain, whether it's day, night, uh, dusk, or dawn, and you lose control in the rain, you're going to, I mean, rain is a lot different than, like, let's say, a sunny day. Because, like I said, rain's going to be tricky, and you got to make sure you keep an eye on the weather. Because, like I said, if it rains and you're leaning the race and you're on slicks, you're, it's like driving on ice. So, hopefully these drivers will make sure they don't make that mistake, and hopefully we can have a safe and good race at this year's 24 hours of Le Mans. So, yes. Um, so, yeah. Our next World Endurance Podcast episode, which we will have Zachary Taylor back, uh, we're going to recap Brazil, or we're going to preview Brazil, which will be July the 10th at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. That is right before my birthday, so hooray as far as that is concerned, um, which I know I'm going to probably say another holiday, but to be fair, uh, we're doing this because the show and producers uh, want me to do that, so yes. But uh, yeah, if you're watching this episode on uh, YouTube in June, uh, as we're previewing the 24 hours of the ball, we want to say happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Uh, hopefully, uh, they will have, hopefully they have, are looking forward to this race weekend and all that. And uh, like I said, the next time we meet again will be in July. So hopefully everybody has a great summer as we are in the hot summer as, you know, we're going to get sunburned and all that, yada, 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 but. I don't think that matters to me. So, yes. So, as I said, our next episode, that will be July the 11th at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We're going to recap the 24 hours of Le Mans, hopefully with Mr. Zachary Taylor joining me in the um, on the show. I'm sorry if I have to do this uh, live, but hey, that's fine with me. So, we'll recap that. We'll uh, make, rate our, make our predictions and all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, we'll look ahead to, as I said, the race in Brazil. And uh, looking forward to that. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me for episode number three of the World Endurance Podcast. And, again, our thoughts, prayers, concern, condolences go out to Mr. Zachary Taylor and everybody at Indiana Motorsports. And uh, hopefully Zachary Taylor um, will be feeling a lot better and ready to go when we do this show uh, on July the 11th at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So, hooray. But if you guys enjoyed this episode, be sure to give it a like. If you haven't considered subscribing yet, I highly recommend you do so. In order to keep up with some wonderful content coming out in the near future, as well as future episodes of your favorite podcast coming out throughout the rest of this weekend. And onward to the next. I am Dean Duvold, a.k.a. PCS Ray Blue Hedgehog 26. On behalf of Zachary Taylor and everybody in the World Endurance Podcast, thank you so much for watching. And remember, you can make a difference. We'll see you guys next time for another episode when the World Endurance Podcast returns. Bye, everybody.